grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Welcome to Worship with Wayside Presbyterian Church. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Scripture proclaims that Jesus is the light of the world. As we walk with him, we discover the blessed way in which the humble and those who mourn find comfort and belonging. Wherever you are on your journey of life and faith, may you hear the invitation of Christ and walk no longer in darkness, but have the light of life. Let us worship God. As we turn to the reading of Scripture, I invite you to join with me in prayer. O oh God, whose blessing and wisdom overflow, we ask one more thing, that your Spirit will fill us as we hear your word. Then may we seek your justice and peace and share your life among the forgotten, weak, and suffering 
through the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. First scripture for today is from Psalm number 15. Listen for God's word. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander with their tongue and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. The second reading today is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. This is a very familiar text, often known as the Beatitudes. Listen for God's word. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Matthew starts this passage with a, a loaded, focused statement. And see if you can figure out who Matthew is hinting at here. When he writes, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And what other biblical figure do we know who went up not just a mountain, but the mountain? Well, it's Moses, the greatest prophet of the Old Testament. And when he went up the mountain on behalf of the people, of the crowd he was with, and what did he bring down from the mountain? The Ten Commandments, of course. So Matthew is giving us an object lesson to emphasize his belief, his conviction, his message that Jesus is the fulfillment of the law of Moses. As Jesus himself will say it, he's not erasing it, he's not taking it away, Jesus is fulfilling it. So hold that thought a moment while I diverge just briefly. One of my favorite Bible teachers used a nice analogy for the Ten Commandments. He said it was like a picket fence around the community of God's people. Picket, because really, as he said, it's only as strong as the will of the people to stay within its bounds. But also picket because it is beautiful in its definition. It defines the beloved community. And by staying within the bounds, even though a blessed life is not guaranteed, staying within it, it certainly the blessed life is certainly much more possible. And, and here are just, just a few examples, kind of referring to the Ten Commandments. I mean, remaining faithful to the covenant of marriage strengthen, strengthens not only those in the marriage, but it strengthens the family. It strengthens the community when everyone stays within their marriage covenant. Not stealing. Well, that enables freedom for people to not have to be so afraid. It gives them a sense of safety. Not coveting. Well, that 
that talks about the security of one's heart and the ability to live in trust among neighbors, um, holding on to then the mystery, the mystery of God, the mystery that's at the center of all things that kindles a reverence, a reverence for life and for life's experiences, for the whole creation, for the community. Now, we also know that laws like the Ten Commandments can also become tools of oppression. The prohibitions that are within that, those laws can be unevenly applied. They can be shaped as weapons to punish and to exclude. And we know, we see that in the life of Jesus, how he dealt with that. And that's why Christian reformers like Luther and Calvin echo the lessons of Jewish rabbis in in the Talmud who raise the question, more than what is prohibited by the law, what is required by it? What's required within the law? The law is the picket fence. And the law is also sort of like a foundation. So, it's good to ask questions like, well, what gardens then, what good things are planted inside the fence? What what paintings are painted inside the fence? What beauty is engendered? What good is sought and done? What truth is discovered and upheld inside that picket fence? And for example, not only don't commit adultery, but, but expand. Find joy in your spouse. Find joy in life together. Do those things that enrich the shared life. And more than not stealing, be generous and seek to encourage generosity among others and, and a spirit of generosity within the community And beyond not coveting, seek the good of your neighbor. Be on hand to celebrate their good fortune. Support them when they are down. Watch out for their children the same way that you watch out for your own. And burnish the sense of divine mystery with time and curiosity and wonder. Okay, so a minute ago, before I diverged into this discussion about the Ten Commandments, a minute ago I said, hold that thought that Jesus is the fulfillment of the law. Well, having just looked a little bit at the implications of the law and the flourishing of the law instead of only the prohibitions of it, here is Jesus going up the mountain to deliver teachings that when we, when we read them about Blessed are those who mourn and poor in spirit. I mean, these things sound fantastic and maybe even impractical. And if they are meant to be obligations, well, they're really very hard to know. Well, how do you obey these teachings of Jesus? So I appreciate Episcopal priest Charles Cook and the things he suggests in his commentary on the Beatitudes. He invites us to not take each one and try to apply it all on its own, but to hear the teaching of Jesus in the Beatitudes, in the Sermon of the Mount, as the description of a spirit for embracing life. And that that all together, the Beatitudes resonate with each other and support each other and speak to us as a whole, much the way the variety of our lives and experience do, much the way we would find seeking to fulfill the law, flourish with the law within the picket fence of our communities, our lives, and our existence. Charles Cook writes that there are three principles for living the spirit of the Beatitudes, and here they are. Simplicity and hopefulness and compassion. And the beauty of these 
These three allow us to be in the world, in the world, while not being totally shaped by the world. Jesus is teaching us the kingdom of God, an alternative to what the world seems to be pursuing. As for simplicity, the first, it's not about dumbing down. It's not about discarding serious thought. It's about hearing the words of Jesus plainly for what they are. To simplify means to hear as much as we're able without the filters of our prejudices and our preferences. That unfortunate sense we often have that the matter at hand is impossible. In short, simplicity is to get out of our own way. Cook writes, we receive more courage than fear when we hear Jesus say, you are blessed in this life whenever you demonstrate humility and bring a peaceful presence and open your heart to others and show mercy on those who cry for it. To come simply and to hear simply moves us into the spirit of the kingdom of Beatitudes. Now, the theologian Jürgen Moltmann once wrote that the church is on a downward path when our attitudes move from righteous anger to cynicism. Cynicism offers little hope that things will get better. The mantra of cynicism is, don't worry about it. It's just the way things are. Get used to it. Well, the spirit of the Beatitudes is the complete opposite, which is the second spirit. It is hopefulness. I mean, Jesus Christ comes into a pretty tough world, tough time, and Jesus offers hope to the hopeless. As persons of hope in Christ, we stand in the world sure of the possibility experienced with the foretaste of the day in our own lives and in the lives of others when mercy, humility, peace, and love are the true descriptions of what it means to live, to really live. Mercy, humility, peace, and love. We approach the world with the spirit of hope, even when the outward signs indicate otherwise. Well, let's take up that image of the picket fence again, a symbol of the law of Moses, and let's take up the idea of flourishing within that fence. Well, this is how the third principle of the spirit of Beatitudes is expressed in compassion. One of the best images that I keep in my memory that I've seen of compassion, it was at one of those Sunday suppers at Wayside prepared and served for homeless folk downtown. On this particular occasion, we were at the, the First United Methodist Church serving. And, you know, when you gather there, we you can't help it. Built the way we are, we felt a sense of pity. I think we all felt a little sorry for these folks. It was a freezing cold night. And we all knew we were going to be leaving there and going home to, to our comfortable, warm homes. And as we talked with people going through the line, we, and, and as we visited with them, we remembered our encounters with people in need and, and our desire to help and to fix their situation. But one of our young people, a teenager, sat went over, and, because there were so many of us there, there really were too many of us for the jobs to do. Well, so he went over and sat at table. And I saw him sit down, and the faces of the people around the table, they were just, they were just eating their dinner, kind of numb. And, and they began to light up around that table as they engaged in this real and honest conversation with him, this young man. He was, 
he was talking with them, and pretty soon laughter was spilling from that table. And everyone else in the room kind of noticed how, how that table was suddenly bright with, with this conversation. And one of the men got up from the table and he, he grabbed our young person and moved him over to this other table and sat down with him. And the conversation lit up those faces. And soon laughter and delight was evident there. So I had to ask. I went over and asked him. I said, what are you all talking about? And our young person kind of shrugged and said, just talking about life? And the man there said, we're talking about life and how funny and strange and wonderful life is. They were flourishing around those tables. The late teacher Henry Nouwen wrote that compassion grows with the inner recognition that your neighbor shares your humanity with you. And this partnership, it cuts through all the walls that might have kept you separate, across all barriers of land and language, of wealth and poverty, of knowledge and ignorance. We are one heading through the journey of life. To hear Jesus' description of the blessed life and to let those words rest in us and commit us and woo us and call us to simplicity and hopefulness and compassion is something we can all do. And as we do so, we will discover that which makes life flourish, that fulfills the law, and find that what the Beatitudes call us to is not irrational at all, but is truly the only rational way to live, the blessed way made available to the world in Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray. God, our creator, we thank you for the gift of Jesus. He walked among us embodying your creative and life-giving word in his body, his life, his words, his deeds, his suffering, his death, and his resurrection. When we see him loving the outcast, forgiving the sinner, confronting the hypocrite, and teaching the crowds a new way of life, we see your heart, your compassion, your mercy, your character. To know Jesus is to love him, and to love him is to know him, and to know and to love him is to know and love you. So help us, Lord, to be among your disciples who come to you to be taught. Reveal to your, your kingdom and teach us to walk in its ways. Help us, Lord, to be among the poor in spirit, to see and know that your kingdom is our homeland even now. Bless those whose spirit is troubled by trauma, anxiety, or loneliness. Help us, Lord, to be among those who mourn, to join you in our sadness for all that's wrong and broken in this world, and in joining you to find true comfort in lives and a world being made whole. Help us, Lord, to be among the meek, those who find strength in weakness and power in vulnerability, the same strength that our Savior showed in his life and death. Help us to never be motivated by fear, because when we have your love, we indeed have all the world. Help us, Lord, to desire justice, rightness, goodness, fairness, and integrity, more than a hunger for food or thirst for water. And so let us find the truest fulfillment and satisfaction as our will is aligned with your will and our desire is aligned with the true purposes of this world. Help us, Lord, to be among the merciful. Help us to be a true friend of those who are hated, misunderstood, rejected, excluded, disregarded, just as you 
God of mercy have been through Christ. When others fail, when they fail us, help us show the same mercy that you show to those who fail you, including us. Help us, Lord, to be among the pure in heart. May your pure light shine in our heart and dispel every shadow, every agenda and ulterior motive, so that our heart can love you completely and see you perfectly. Help us, Lord, to be among the makers of peace. Many build walls and sow fear and distrust. And many spread rumors and inflame conflict and profit from it. Help us to be among, among them, an agent and messenger of your peace and reconciliation. And in so doing, bear your likeness, the God of peace. Help us, Lord, not to fear being among the persecuted, but rather to rejoice in having the honor of standing for your restorative justice and righteousness so that we will see that your kingdom is our homeland even now. And help us, Lord, to be among the, those who will suffer wrong well and with grace. Help us not to resent it, not to fear it, not to escape it. Instead, help us to find joy in it. When others insult us, make our life more difficult, or falsely malign us because of you. Help us to see through the momentary, light trouble to the lasting and weighty reward. Even now, for your kingdom comes to a love that is willing to give and suffer for others, rather than a pride willing to make others suffer for our own benefit. We pray all of these things through Jesus Christ our Lord, who has proclaimed your blessing upon the mourning and rejected, the merciful and the peaceful, and who has taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good and repay no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.